Boom. We're live, baby. All right, Let's man. Do it. What's up, Matt Smith? How you doing? Man, I'm living the dream. How are you, brother? I'm doing really good, man. I'm doing really good. Um, hey, listen, I'm really excited to have an opportunity to connect with you today. Um, obviously, you and I connected through uh, Mr. Adam Bailey, uh, who I had on the show a couple weeks ago. And um, what I want to do first, and I won't spend a lot of time on this, is, is I really just want to um, learn a little bit more about uh, how you got into real estate, how long you've been doing it. So give me the whole story. I know you mentioned before we got on here live that you had joined the real estate industry in 2013. So give us the rundown, brother. Yeah, so I've, I've uh, been in real estate for about five years, um, which I'm still a baby in the industry, right? So I'm um, still learning every day, but um, I was I got was fortunate enough to get into the real estate industry because um, just I was in the sales industry and I kept running into people that were asking me to join them in real estate. And I thought, yeah. well, maybe there's a, maybe there's a, there's a common theme here. Maybe I should listen to these people. And so one day I said, put your money where your mouth is. Let's try it. And um, very fortunate, took off very quick. And, um, and so my fir very first year, first full year in real estate, I sold 75 sides by myself as an individual agent. Um, wow. Yeah. Took off like a rocket. Um, just hustled. Uh, had a, had a newborn at home and, had to pay the bills, you know? So, um, just really, really hustled, probably put in hundred hours a week, if not more. Um, and, and from there, I just, I kept growing and people, people really connected with me. Um, I just, I always like to connect with my people and, and my clients and, and they're like family. So when I would make that connection, they would send me their friends and it just grew a referral business very, very quickly. Right. Uh, most, most agents say that takes a lot of years to get, I got, I was very fortunate, got it very, very quick and still have it to this day. Um, and so I got to a point where, man, I don't want to work hundred hours a week, you know, all the time. And, and I want to be able to help and connect more people. So, um, I, I hired an assistant and we started growing it that way and, and we kept getting more business. And so I hired a buyer's agent and we just continued and can continued to grow. Um, I formed my team in 2016. Um, and so that was the first year of Matt Smith real estate group. Um, as of today, we have 15 licensees on our team. Um, and, uh, our goal is, is 400 units. Um, so, we, we've grown very, very rapidly. We opened two offices this year. Um, so we have uh, one and we have two different locations. So we just opened when we uh, moved over to eXp. Dude, that's nuts, man. That That is like the, the when I hear that, it's like because we, we, we kind of have like the, almost the exact same story because I got back in full time in 2014. Now, I only sold 57 houses. My or uh, I sold 57 houses my first year. And then the second year we went to 104, the third year we went to 187. And then last year we went to 309 and the goal for us is 400 this year. Yeah. But like we got in right around the same time. That's really cool. But what's really cool about your story is that you, um, you just didn't know what you didn't know. You know what I mean? You just got right. in and started hustling and you, you just like, nobody told you you couldn't do it. So you went out and sold 75 houses. Yeah. How did you do that, man? How did you do that? So, I mean, honestly, just work. Um, so we're in a military market and here's, here's, uh, here's my perspective on it is we, we had a big boom before I got in the industry, um, here in our military market. And so it was, um, I'll just use the word. It was easy. Okay. There's people waiting in line to buy houses because the market was just growing very, very fast. Um, I haven't seen it. I've just heard about it. Um, and so I've heard about it from other agents in the industry and they just got used to, um, picking out who they wanted to sell houses to. And I mean, I just came up from a hardworking family and had the work ethic and, and saw the need for somebody just to go out and hustle and just, I just took advantage of it. That's awesome, man. And so do you, do you think that um, by and large, you, you, do you think that's a product of maybe you're, you're a little bit different. You're from a different, you cut from a different cloth than most agents in the market. Like you, you really, most agents kind of, and this is kind of true in my market is a lot of agents are, they're very reactive. In other words, they kind of sit and wait for business to come to them. And, and so it was a little bit easier, I think, in my marketplace that if you if you were a hustler, like if you were willing to sit down and, and, and pound the phones and, and and really try to get in front of people, then you get you had a distinct advantage. Is, is that true in your market there in Missouri? Oh, spot on, man. So um, something I, I tell to my team all the time is we, we strive to be proactive, not reactive. Um, and so you just got to be ahead of ahead of the curve. Um, if you sit around and wait on things to happen, then we're doing our clients a disservice. Um, and so at the end of the day, this whole thing that we've built is to help the clients better, you know, and if we just, if we just sit back and we just, we just wait on things to happen, we're not, we're doing a disservice to those clients. And so I just really took that mentality and, and really um, fortunate to have some great people on my team with me on this journey to, that, 
that have taken it even to a whole nother level um, just because of their work ethic and, and how much, how big parts they have and what they want to do to help the clients. So yeah, that's uh, that's spot on. That's freaking awesome, man. And so what was your volume in 2017 and how many units did you guys sell? We sold uh, 226 units um, in 2017. Um, that is it was a, it was kind of a growth year. Uh, we, our first year in 2016, um, we rebuilt um, from ground zero. Um, we, we um, don't want to get into the details, but I had to start over. And so I started at absolute zero. Um, and I started with an, an admin and a buyer's agent. Um, and we ended up from no listings, no contracts, no anything. January one, um, we had a hundred sides the very first year. Um, and so we just, we just built it. And I mean, the buyer's agent had never sold the house before. Yeah. The admin had never read a, written a contract before, read a contract. So we, I mean, just really bootstrapped it. Um, and then last year, um, we added at the end of 2016, we added some other pieces. Um, but again, they were all new agents. Um, and so we just we added a bunch of new people um, that saw what we were doing and said, "Hey, I think I can do that." And we just we brought them along and did 226. Agents. And this year, with the transition to me, the big difference is we are we've made enough of an impact in our market that we've got some people that that really number one we've trained and, and grown the people in our industry or in our business um to really know the industry and be able to serve clients but we've also attracted some people that have already been there and done that um and so it's a great great great, great mix to, us, to really get us to that next step yep so without getting into too much detail man because you said something that really stuck out to me is the fact that you kind of started over from scratch but tell me what that was like kind of like emotionally for you just to completely start over so, I mean, that's the way the rear view mirror now. I've had to do it twice now. Um, so uh, it's in the rear view mirror. Um, a lot of people I've talked to just say, how have you done it? How have you done it? But, man, you got to start somewhere. Sometimes you got to make sacrifices for the bigger picture. And I'm just one of those people I always play long term. Um, if, if you just if you put your nose down, you work hard, you treat people right, take care of your clients, good things are going to happen. And so yeah. um, it's just, it's, we, we literally started from absolute zero twice now. Um, just uh, again, don't want to get into the details, but when we made, made transitions, um, you seen my thing about 97 listings. Um, that's that's yeah, we lost those. Um, so it's just starting over. A lot of people are, think that's a huge amount of listings, which it is. Um, it's a yeah. lot to give up, but it was I gave it up for a good purpose. Number one, I wanted more from me and my family, but I wanted more from my team too, and I wanted more from my clients. And and so it was a, it was a small sacrifice to, to get to where we want to go. That's huge, man. That's huge. And, and the good thing about those experiences is that when you come out the other side of them, you're usually stronger. And, and what, what I know about you now um, is the fact that you're a very resilient person. In other words, you, you could, this could probably happen to you even again. And you would, you would dust yourself, you would get up, dust yourself off and make it happen again. Because the funny thing about it is, Matt, is, you know, when you learn how to do it, it's not like you forget, right? It's 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 that okay. I gotta get up and I gotta just do it again, right? It's not that I don't. There's no more excuses of I don't know how to do it. It's it's do you have the will to get up and do it again? And you did that. You did it twice now. So yeah. that's that's awesome, man. So tell me about tell me about this ride for you, this EXP ride, man. Tell me about the first time you heard about it, who you heard it from, and 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 then and then we'll dig into kind of like when you came over and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, so the first time I had heard about it, I was uh, I was actually on the hunt for. I wanted to be a broker, you know, so I wanted a franchise. Uh, my team was growing, and I thought I think I can do this on my own. So I was hunting around for franchises. I had talked with somebody that was one with one of the brands, um, and um, it didn't work out. Um, not enough room in our market, and different things, and and so um, they stayed in touch with me. And about six months after we met, and realized it wasn't going to work said, Hey, have you heard of this EXP thing? And reached out and, and told me about it. And I thought, uh, I've never heard of that, but that looks pretty cool. You know? And so I went home and I brought, I brought, um, the first buyer's agent I mentioned, I brought him um, over to my house and sat in my basement until midnight, just watched the video over and over and over again, trying to study this thing. And see, is this a good fit? And my immediate reaction was, man, this is going to change the industry. This is awesome. Um, I slept on it a couple of days and I looked at it again and I thought, this kind of scares me. It's new. It's different. I want to. I want to sell real estate. I don't want to attract agents. You know, I don't want all this other stuff. Um, and so I passed. Um, and I kept doing what I was doing. And about eight months later, um, I kept seeing big players across the country because I, I learned. I learned from all 
putting you all these big players through social media and different things. And I, I follow them in nuggets here and there and, and just tells me to grow my business. And I just kept seeing these people joining EXP. I thought, I missed something. I got to look at this. So I looked at it again and called some big players, Adam Bailey being one of the main ones, and and just talked to him about it. It just it was the right time, and it made sense. So honestly, what I had to do to make the decision for me, it was the stuff I didn't understand that kind of scared me. So I removed the stock. I removed the revenue share off the table and thought, EXP as a whole, as a real estate company, is this going to make sense for me and my business? And the answer was yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, because now I don't have to be my own broker. I don't it just took a lot of liability to take off of my plate and the technology that they had and everything. I thought, yeah, this is a good fit. And then I threw the other stuff back in. I put the stock back in and the revenue share back into the table. And man, this thing is the best thing I've ever seen. Um, I, I just removed that stuff and realized, all right, I like the company at the core. And then you throw this cherry and whipped cream and cherry on top. And it, uh, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. Yep. You nailed it, man. That whipped cream and cherry, because, you know, a lot of people know that I came over from Keller Williams and, and it was a great company and we liked the model. We did that for three years and we thought we'd never leave, man. And and I was at the point of uh, of opening up my own market center. And like literally we had, you know, we had we were going through the process with the regional directors. We had already had approval from um, uh, KWRI and it was like it was this was happening, man. And, and so, you know, when we found out about EXP, it was like, boom, it kind of like knocked us back a little bit. Now, granted, I had heard about it before. Um, I just didn't hear about it from the right people and the timing wasn't right. Yep. So much like you, we just kind of went about our business and and, and kind of turned our nose up at it. But when, when I think you was one thing you said is that m realtors who pay attention to stuff that happens nationally and they don't just have the blinders on paying attention to stuff that's going on in their local market, those are the ones that are usually um, they're they're they have a better understanding of what's going on in the industry, and so people like that typically make the move first, and then everybody else follows. Well, you know, for you, it's like that is the that that that's kind of the crux of the situation is that when you 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 know you said you had these ninety seven listings right, and I definitely want to get in and talk to that, and, and so the crux is created when. Okay, it's like, I, all right, yeah, I've decided to make this move to EXP, but but wait just a minute, you know, I got there's there's a little that goes behind that, so I, I definitely want to dig into that as much as you can tell us. Yeah, so um, you hit on something there I wanted to mention. So when I was looking into EXP, um, I, I wanted to make sure that it was a good fit for my agents too, um, and that's just one thing that that I really haven't hit on much is that that was one of the biggest factors to me is that it gave opportunity to the people that have helped me build this thing. Um, and I mean, they're a big part of the reason I'm doing this It's for them so they can create a future for them and their families. Um, and if, if they can have extra opportunity because of EXP, man, it's just a no brainer for me. Yeah. So talk about like, why don't we talk about that really quick and then we can get to the, the second part of that is, when you talk about what it does for your agents, I'm assuming that not only are you referencing um, everything that we have available to us at, at, at EXP in terms of technology and uh, and everything else, but also like the revenue share and, and, and then the opportunity for stock. Um, what does that, give me, be more specific, man. What does that mean to them? So I'll tell a quick story here. Um, one of my one of my buyer's agents on my team, um, he, he hadn't really bought into EXP yet. Um, he, he was very famous for saying, I'm here because I want to be a part of this team. He didn't really understand the EXP vision. That was until one day he comes and he comes, sees me in my office and he's just going crazy. I'm just ballistic. I'm like, man, what happened? Hey, did you win the lottery or what? He said, no, I got my first revenue check. I said, what do you mean? How much was it? He said, 200 bucks. And he was just <laughs> going crazy because he naturally attracted a couple of agents to the team. And so they had a closing and he, he got revenue share of 200 bucks and that excitement, where else are you going to get that? I mean, right. and that was like the first month into the EXP, you know, so that's, you can just grow on that so much, but no matter how big or small you want to go with that, just naturally doing what we do every day, we talk to agents. And if we share this opportunity and they see it, then we, they benefit, but we also benefit. Even if it's as little as 200 bucks, it can make somebody's day. It can, it can make a car payment. There's just so many different factors that it can have for people. Yeah. And you talk about like impact and we say two hundred dollars, but, you know, it's like it, it, it is it's it has a compounding effect. And people 
I mean, it's getting to the point to where people think that, you know, that all we're doing is, is just out recruiting agents, when in reality, that couldn't be further from the truth. The reality of it is we, people are actually coming to us and asking us questions. Now, I wouldn't say that we'd never make a phone call to an agent, um, especially those who were close to when we feel obligated to tell, uh, tell them more about eXp. But like the reality of it is, and I know this about you too, is like, we're both still selling real estate. You know what I mean? It's just now we have this, we have a better story to tell. And when we get out of bed every day, we're excited to go to work because, you know, we have this opportunity now to create long-term wealth, right? It's not, it's not just about the next, next transaction now, right? Absolutely. It's a retirement plan. I mean, what's your exit strategy for real estate? You're going to sell houses till you die, right? Right. Uh, I mean, but now you have different things you can put in place that, I mean, are you going to rely on social, social security when you get old and retire? I mean, it, it may not be there. So why not do something that you do every day, sell houses and build, build up for those relationships with people you already do business with, help them and you get that long-term benefit. And it's, it's a retirement plan for you. Yep. Heck yeah, man. So let's dig into the, to the real meat and potatoes now, brother. So I know a lot of the people are watching here and they saw the headline about these 97 listings. And I'm assuming that this has something to do with, um, with, you know, the former brokerage you were at in, and then in making the move and then, then a decision, a very hard decision probably that you had to make. So let's, let's dive into that. Yeah. So, um, at my last brokerage, our team was, I mean, we just, we were doing very well, phenomenal. We were growing like crazy, um, way faster than, I mean, honestly, I expected. Um, I guess there was just more of a need in the market than, than I really saw. Um, that's that's my business plan always is find the holes and fill it. And so I felt like there was a, there was, we could service clients better. We could service agents better and, and it would have a long-term effect. And I mean, that's what, what happened. And what happens, we kept hitting our head on the ceiling. Um, we were inside of another company that, that we were going faster than they were. Um, and it just, it created tension. And so again, like I said, I'd been looking for a different opportunity. This was waiting for the right one. And, um, and so we were still doing business every day. We didn't stop, you know, we still serviced our clients. So we had, we had 97 listings, um, on the day that my previous brokerage found out we were moving to EXP. Um, they gave us four hours, get your stuff and get out. And by the way, we're, wow. Yeah. Um, so, so that's really the long and the short of, of that story. Um, yeah. um, obviously, there's more to it, but I, I really don't want to dig any deeper than that. Yeah. Are, so were you, tell me this much. Were you at a at a local company or were you at a big brand company? It was a big brand. It was at okay. Century 21. Century 21. Okay. Yeah. And I, I had, do you know Brian Casella? Brian Casella, actually, he's in uh, Southern California. He came over from Century 21 too. It, it, do you think that that's more... The way they treated you in your exit, do you think that's more of a um, Century 21 thing or do you think it's more of a the people that worked at that brokerage thing? Oh, no, I, I think it's the local thing. It was on a local level. Um, yeah, not, nothing against the 21 brand. It's, it's a great brand. Um, and, and I mean, it's a great company for some people. Um, another part that I missed there was with Century 21, we still had to create our own systems. Um, again, not trying to knock them. It just their systems weren't what we were looking for. Um, we were looking for something innovative and that could really, really service our clients better and provide better tools for our agents. And so we had to create our own systems inside of, of the systems that Century 21 provided anyway. And yeah. so, I mean, we still use the same systems today that we use there. The cool thing is part of them are provided by EXP now um, because that's they sustain awesome. them too. That's awesome. And, and, you know, that's smart, brother, that you did that because the reality of it is, you want to be able, you know, if anything happens, um, it is better to have your own proprietary uh, resources that you're using. Um, like we worked at KW and they have, they had a lot of technology. They had eEdge and they had some other things, but we never utilized any of the things that they provided for us because we just didn't know if that was going to be our long-term plan. Now, and, and granted, we always wanted to control, right? And the, the great thing about now coming over to EXP is the fact that they were already, just like you said, they're already doing some of this stuff. Like we, I mean, it's, it's, we work with Commissions Inc. now, I think for three years, three and a half years. And, um, you know, uh, we, EXP provides that. Um, it's part of the $50 a month uh, tech fee. So they already had Sky Slope. They already had some of this trans transaction management uh, stuff in place that, that we were using. So, it really was a kind of a seamless transition for us. But the thing about, I keep finding out from you that, man, we have a very similar story because like 
when we went and told our brokerage, um, we had we got a, it was a similar scenario, it, and they told us, you know, basically we're we're, we're sending your license back to the state, uh, like right now. And so it was like, dude, I mean, can you give me like a week? Like literally, I'd, we had put our heart and soul into this company for three years yes. and helped it grow. And brother, listen, they just turned on us like you would not believe. And uh, and I, I've not heard that story from a lot of people. And I don't think that that is a product of Keller Williams. I think it's more of a product of the people that were working in that brokerage. Yeah. But um, it happened. And the reality of it is it put us in a very tough spot. And it sounds like you went through, through something fairly similar. Yeah, we. Um, so let me let me brag on my team again a little bit. Um, so when this transition was happening, um, of course I brought my team to my office, and it was and we were in panic mode. I mean, we got four hours. We couldn't really close the doors and change the locks. We got to get our stuff out. Um, and so I brought them in. We had a quick huddle. Um, some of the core people knew that we were looking and what we were planning on doing, but because I knew it was potentially going to end this way, I didn't want. I wanted to protect some of the other agents on the team. And so not everybody knew. I didn't want them to force them to keep that secret and different things, you know. So um, so I brought them in, let them know what the plan was. And before I could finish saying it, they said, just stop. What do you need help with? We're with you. We're following you. We don't care what it is. What do you need? What do you need, what do you need from us? We worked out of my basement on my ping pong table in my basement of the conference table for 30 days. None of them complained, showed up every day, helped rebuild this thing from the ground up. And talk about losing 97 listings. Um, we now have 125 listings um, and that was that was about four months ago all this happened um, so th that just shows the power of the team that i have and what we've been able to rebuild because um, we use this as an opportunity to get us closer together and now we have so many more tools to help our agents but also our clients um, and so again like you said earlier just trying to look at this from a positive side we're rebuilding but we get better when we rebuild it yep right it, it forces you to kind of look at everything that you're doing you know the 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 I guess the good thing about um, when we left is the fact that uh, we were able to take our listings with us. But I assume that, and this is the truth for most traditional brokerages, is that the listings belong to the brokerage, right? That's correct. So those 97 listings, although you signed them, they belong to the brokerage, correct? Yep, that is correct. Yeah. And and so you guys, okay, so how was your team structured when you left? Like, I know you said you have what you have 15 agents now. Like is, were you this size when you, when you came over? Uh, no, we had 10 um, when we left We had 10 agents. So uh, we had myself, I was, I was doing team leader hat. Um, plus I was, I was still doing listings um, and a buyer every now and then. Um, and then we had buyers agents, we had admin staff. Um, and then we had a, a guy that was doing commercial. Um, and so now we have actually expanded that. We've got a listing partner. We've got more admins. Um, we've got we've got two offices and it just it continues to grow. And I mean, we're at 15 now. Um, we've got several more that are coming. They're they're standing in line to come work with us either at EXP or on our team just because of of the value we provide to them. And they know that um, that we we really provide more for them so they can provide more for their clients. Yeah, dude, that's awesome, man. And. I'm curious. I, I love asking this question. Like for you, look, when you when you when you got with your leadership and you decided that you were coming over to EXP, um, what was that conversation like with your broker? Very short. Was it really? Yeah. Okay. So it yeah. literally was like, "Hey, get your shit and get out, dude." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's 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 exactly what it was. It wasn't it wasn't a pleasant conversation, and um, I mean, did you I, know it would be that way? Yeah, I had a feeling it would be. Okay. All right. Okay, man. That sucks. But, you know, again, it just kind of goes to show what type of people you're in business with and that ultimately you you probably made the right decision, man. Absolutely. And I talk with other agents about the about transitioning and stuff. Other agents that, that I've talked to that either already come or or maybe had a conversation with me to see what this is all about. And and my, my line to them always is they're like, well, I'm going to lose my business when I leave. If you are scared that the person you're working for is going to take money off of your plate that you earned whenever you leave their company. Why in the world are you staying with them? That's more right. reason to leave, not to stay. Um, it just, and that's, I really, I mean, obviously I've done it twice. I mean, I just truly believe that it's, and again, that's really what we're about here is, is that I've just seen some things that I didn't agree with and wanted to create a safe place for, for clients and agents to come and, and just strive. That is awesome, man. And so now I, I would imagine that the dust is starting to settle a little bit and you can kind of 
you guys can kind of focus more on on, on growth and the future for your folks. Um, I didn't ask this directly, but it sounds like that all of your folks came over with you. Um, the majority did. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Th there was a, there were a couple of stragglers that uh, didn't really didn't really know what was going on. They were in shock or. Um, they had maybe had thoughts about leaving the team anyway because they wanted to do something different, and and so I mean the the majority of us came with us. Um, one of a, one of the agents had just started with the team um, and was still going through onboarding when this happened, and um, and she she stayed, uh, but now she's back with us. Um, so once she seen that we were rebuilding and she kind of put the pieces together, she's like, yeah, I want to come back with you guys. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Uh, we actually had one just like that too, and and. Um, uh, she, she just came back with us about a month ago. Um, I, I think it's kind of like you said, it's more of a, it's, it's, um, it's like, it's like sticker shock. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, I don't want to change. I don't no no no. And then, you know, finally you make the change and then we all came over and then she saw it was safe. And then, you know, she came over and it all worked out for us in the end. So you talked a little bit about like, you, you, it sounds like you're creating some me some momentum in your your market, not only for your team but for EXP. Are you guys the first EXP branch in in your city? Yes, yes. we are. Dude, that's awesome, man. So you're kind of setting the standard for how how it's done there in your market as it relates to EXP. Yeah, and we're we're, I mean, we're in a small market, um, so everybody assumed. I didn't I didn't know this before, but after we left, um, I've talked to several agents and several other people just in the community. They said we we were wondering how long it was going to take you to open your own office. So everybody assumed that this was coming, but the fact that we have an EXP sign outside, they're like EX who? Why do you need why do you need a broker? Why don't you do it by yourself? And honestly, that was my plan. I was going to. Um, yeah. None of the none of the franchises I looked into, none of the big brands had enough value. Um, and so I thought no, nothing against them again. I just they just, just weren't a good fit for us. And so I thought right. we can do this on our own. And then I saw EXP again, and I'm like. Why would I do it on my own? Why, why don't I add all this other stuff, not only for me, but for, again, for my agents, all this right. other stuff that it adds in. And and we we caught a lot of, even from some of the lenders that we work with, they're like, that was a stupid move. Why are you guys putting all your business with this company nobody's ever heard of? I'm like, you don't understand it. You just don't see it. You're thinking way too small. You know, right. we're still our brand. We're still Matt Smith Real Estate Group. We're just brokered by EXP Realty. Um, and right. it's it's really just open the door and open a bunch of eyes in our community. And there's, there's a lot of people that are looking at like, man, I wish I would have done that. Right. When people were going to Blockbuster, no one had ever heard of Netflix. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, but you know, you said one thing that really resonated with me is in, in, in this is true for me as well, because I told you we were moving to KW and really the, and we were opening our, we were opening our own market center, but that didn't benefit anyone on my team. It only benefited me, right? Cause I was going to be an owner. Uh, when we moved to when, the reason why we decided to move to EXP is because of the 309 transactions I did last year, I only went on 10 appointments. So what does that tell you? That tells you that my team are the, are the people that went out and sold those properties. And and so when considering a move, I didn't I couldn't just consider what I wanted. I need to consider what they wanted because we wanted sustainability, right? Sure. And so for you, when you said that, when you guys when you moved over and considered opening up your own brokerage, it was like, really, who did that benefit? It benefited you. And, and sure, culturally, I mean, it would be great for you and your team, but it wouldn't go much past that. And then you run into the whole problem of recruiting and retention, right? Because you can't, you have, then you have to compete against an EXP and you can't provide uh, revenue share and you can't provide any company stock. Or if you could, it probably wouldn't be worth a whole heck of a lot, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, in that, and then on top of the technology, the tools, and, and a piece I want to hit on is the collaboration. Um, that's a piece I didn't see coming. And so uh, when I say collaboration, a lot of people don't understand what I'm talking about. But um, you mentioned Adam Bailey, and he's he's been on your show. Um, man, Adam Bailey, Jeff Williams, I just want to give them a shout out. They have completely helped me change my business. Um, the, without, without EXP, I would have never got to be in business with people of that caliber. And they have a they have an interest in my business to help me grow because of exp and i mean just the reason that I, one of the reasons i really pulled the trigger i had a conversation with adam bailey and we just talked and talked and talked and, and it was just he was talking about all the value he could add to my business he wasn't saying hey look how much money you can make look how much look how much stock you're going to get he said look how i can help you grow your business and that's what i wanted i want i want to grow my agents i want to grow my team and i want to better serve my clients 
and eXp was the best model for me to be able to do that. If I would have done it on my own, I wouldn't have the support of these guys, you know? So that is the collaboration piece. I mean, I've got cell phone numbers from people that are idols to me that I followed on social media and they, they have a best interest in my business. I'll send them a text and they'll text back in two minutes and say, what can I do to help? Where else are you going to get that? Yep. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I can just hear the excitement in your voice and certainly I'm glad to be in business with you, brother. So what do you see like for you? What is the goal? So 400 transactions, like where do you want to take this thing? Like how many, what is your ultimate three, five, 10 year vision? <laughs> um, so every time everybody asks me this, um, it changes. It keeps going up. because We keep, we keep surpassing what I set um, in the future. So um, next year we're going to do 500 units. That's my goal. Um, but I really, I mean, Adam did it. I'm, I'm shooting for a thousand. Um, that's, that's my long-term goal. Um, and, and it may not be all on my team and maybe some network and maybe I think the, the real estate team is kind of changing a little bit. There's still a need for the team of uh, the old way, but we just kind of have to morph it a little bit because EXP has changed real estate. Um, so um, I just, a thousand is my number. That's where I'm going. And, and I, the reason I say that is if I set a high enough bar and a high enough vision, there's enough people I can bring with me that they can reach their goals inside of our system as well. Yep. That's that dude. You're, you're a smart cookie, man. Like we were just talking about this the other day. It, it's great to have really talented people on your team um, who continue to raise the bar because what they do is they, they continue to raise your bar. You get pressure from within. So it forces you to make your world bigger so that their world can fit inside your world. So Absolutely. you just nailed it, man. And, and that that's good stuff. So, I'm curious, man, like where, where do you like with revenue share, do you have a goal in mind for revenue share? Is this something that you just kind of want to happen organically for you? Yeah. Um, honestly, when I made the decision, like I said, I, I took revenue share off the table. That had no factor in my decision. I made the decision without revenue share and without stock. And then I add it back in as, as whipped cream and cherry on top. So, I mean, revenue share is great. I'm getting some now, but I really haven't set any goals there. Again, that's not my focus. Um, if, if revenue share comes from me serving more people and being able to provide value to other agents across the country, like Adam and Jeff have done to me, then sure, I'm sure it'll come. But my goal is to help people. Um, and I feel like within this model, it just provides so much opportunity for me not to just help people that are here in my office, but I can help people across the country and people in Canada and, and more markets coming soon. I just, it, I hope you can hear my excitement because it's, it's something like the real estate world needed something like this. There's just there's the collaboration piece is really what's going to change the industry. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. So like, where do you with your team and everything like the dynamics of it? Are, are you from a business perspective? Are you trying to are, are do you want to eventually get into some sort of a CEO type role? Sure. Yeah. And and I'm 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 pretty close to being there. Um, um, I'm still doing listings and different things here and there, but um, we're the problem is we're just growing so fast that I still have to, I have to help in and help, you know? Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's a great thing, right? It's a, it's a growing pain. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my goal. I would like to just be, um, be a coach and mentor and, and a CEO and really, really kind of see the future before it comes to kind of help see what, what waves are coming at us so we can, we can steer around them. Yeah. And I told you like before we, we went live that, um, that really this, I'm, I've created this platform for people like you, to come on and share their story in hopes that it might connect with um, that agent or that broker out there who may be considering um, moving to EXP or just doing their homework, trying to learn a little bit more or, 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 or like you and I did, you know, they, they just like they globally, they want to know what's going on out in the real estate market. But for that individual that is, is maybe considering EXP or at least a move to another brokerage and looking into EXP, what do you say to that person? So this is this is a, a little direct, but that's kind of my personality. I tell them they owe it to their family to look at this with an open mind. You are you are potentially letting your family down if you don't at least look at this model with an open mind. Um, and why I say that, because um, I've just talked to so many people that have looked at it and just they won't even talk to me about it. Right. And I'm like, no, this is not a pyramid scheme. This is not this is a real estate company. Um, look at the transaction amount that we're doing at EXP. Look how fast it's growing. It's not like we're just adding agents and no production. Um, we are adding some of the top real estate agents across the country. Um, I mean, this thing is growing, but it's growing both in, in agent count and it's growing 
in revenue and, and transactions. And so I just I just really try to get people to look at it with an open mind. Um, and and sometimes that's hard to do. But maybe and I always tell them too, this may not be a good move for you, but yeah. it was a great move for us. And all I'm asking, I'm trying to share this opportunity. You, you are my friend. I respect you. Um, and I really feel like I'm letting you down. You'll look back five years from now and say, man, I wish Matt Smith would have told me about this. And so I owe that to you um, to at least share this model with you to see if it's a good fit for you and your business. Love it, man. You know, I'm, I've always been curious. One thing um, I've, I've always, I guess it's like, it, this conversation seems to be an easy one with like Keller Williams um, or Remax agents, even uh, to, to some respect. But when I start talking to like um, traditional brokerage people like Cobalt Banker or Berkshire Hathaway or Century 21, it just it's there seems to be some sort of a there, it's just a different conversation. It's just a different. I don't know. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, it, it, yeah. like with KW, I, I, I don't I wish I could really dig into in, to that and understand it. And I don't know if it has something to do with. Um, you know, some sort of a loyalty that they feel to the, those uh, those traditional brokerage. What do you think that is, man? So, um, I mean, I'm going to give Keller Williams a little props. I mean, their their model is similar. Right. Um, yeah. And so it's it was it was the new revolutionary thing whenever it was it was out. Um, EXP has now changed that and taken that to a whole nother level. So I think those people that have have joined that bandwagon have already already kept an open mind and they see how that model worked for them. And then they are. So they're already halfway there. They're already one foot in. They see they see the different model. They don't. It's not a tradition, a completely traditional model anymore. And so it's easier for them to put the second foot um, in, into the puddle instead of if they're coming from like a Century Twenty One or a mom and pop shop and they have to jump in with both feet. Um, they don't get a chance to. They don't get a chance to just really tip tiptoe into it, you know. Um, and I feel like that's the advantage with somebody that has already been with a company that's kind of been a little bit forward thinking in the past. Why do you think people continue to give away large sums of money to traditional brokerages? I don't know. I, it, I just honestly, some of them I've talked to don't know how much they're paying that that brokerage. Yeah. They, they have not done the math. They see how much they've made, but they haven't seen how much they've left on the table. Yeah. What do you think? Um, do you think that EXP will eventually be the death of the traditional brokerage? Oh, 100 percent. And I think it's faster than we think. Um, it just, it's just it's compounding. Um, and so it just you take you take how fast that we've grown in the past year. Um, now now we have that many more agents to grow at the same rate. Um, and it's 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 really gonna. I feel it's gonna blow people's mind um, how fast that we grow in the next three years. Um, I believe it's it's just really 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 it's gonna be unexpected. I mean we're already growing faster than anybody ever thought, right? Yeah, but this yeah. is just the beginning. Um, we just now got the big players in. There's still so much opportunity, so much room for growth. So you think people think will eventually just they'll catch on, right? And they'll they'll start to figure out, hey, I'm I'm paying you know fifty thousand dollars to Colwell Banker, and I'm not getting very much value for that. Yeah, I would I would hope so. Um, I would hope eventually um, the light bulb will go off. Um, I think I, I was watching some of your shows and one and you said it and I've heard other people say it too. It's, it's one of those things that once you see it, you can't unsee it. And so I just really think that some people just it's timing or that they've had a stressful day or, or so, and they just don't want to look into it. But whenever it's the right time and they actually look at it with an open mind, I think the light bulb is going to go off and they'll be like, what have I been doing for the past 10 years? This was crazy. Why didn't I go over sooner? That's awesome, man. Well, Listen, brother, this has completely exceeded my expectations. Um, it's been an opportunity for me to get to know you better and for me to get to connect with you. Um, you have an amazing story. Uh, I can't wait to to hopefully have a beer with you down at EXP Con, man, and, and, and connect there. further. Um, tell me tell me this, man. Like, how can people connect with you? Like, what, what is your preferred reference for, you know, people? I guess you, you, you like Facebook. You like, what do you like? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if somebody wants to talk, um, look, even if you're not in our line, any of that, that doesn't matter to me. There's a bigger purpose here. Um, so anybody wants to reach out, just reach out to me on Facebook. Um, you can find me. Um, I'm, uh, Mike tagged me here in this post. Just reach out to me, Facebook Messenger, and, and I'd be happy to connect and, and anything I can do to help. I'm here to help. That's awesome, man. Well, listen, I, I, uh, I truly appreciate you taking some time out of your busy day, man. And uh, I wish you the best. 
uh, I do. I, I'm going to take you up on, uh, on on the beer down in uh, in New Orleans. Do we will definitely connect and, and look forward to uh, to talking more. All right. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. All right, brother. Thanks. Thanks.